Today I'm going to be working on my Marantz 1820 cassette deck again. I've worked on this unit before. I think I changed the belts and did a speed adjustment. This is part of my personal collection, but I want to get it a little bit better. So today I'm doing the azimuth adjustment, which I think I didn't do before. I do have the service manual. They tell you to hook up a voltmeter and use that as a test instrument but I'm using my oscilloscope today I'm gonna use the XY mode of the oscilloscope that is I'm gonna be taking the output from both of the channels coming from the cassette deck and feeding one output to the X input and the other into the Y input of course for this we have to put the scope into XY mode which I already have and then adjust the controls here, the vertical controls, in order to get a usable uh, figure on the uh, display. And you see I've got it set up here as to where I got it at about a 45 degree angle. Right now I'm feeding in a signal from a audio generator, a signal generator, it's a thousand hertz sine wave and that's hooked up directly to the scope because I want to see which way the trace tilts when it's in phase. I know it's going to be, this is in phase because I'm feeding the same output into the oscilloscope. So this is how my in phase, then in phase trace looks. It's, uh, I got it set up as to where it's about at a 45 degree angle and it's slanted to the, slanted to the right. In fact, I've got both here, both of the, both of the um, vertical controls set up, so they're the same. This is on one volt here, and this is on volt one volt here. So, with that said, um, I may as well start. And here's like what my connection right now looks like. Let me grab this jumble of wires here, and this is. Uh, these clips here, that's just a cable coming from my signal generator and you can see those are two direct probes and they're just hooked up across that. Now here's the test tape I'm using. It's a Sony, I think it's a P4. It's recorded at 6.3 kilohertz. Of course the azimuth test tapes are always, re always recorded at uh, higher frequencies because the high frequency dropout is more noticeable at the higher frequencies that's why they don't use like one kilohertz or something like that they use I've seen 6.3 I've even had I think I even have a tape here somewhere where it's even higher than 6.3 kilo I think it's 10 kilohertz or something like that um, you could theoretically make your own if the machine that you're recording on already has correct azimuth that's the thing you always have to have some kind of a reference what you could theoretically do if you knew you had a good commercial recording, like you used to buy them pre-recorded cassettes, at least back in the day we did, and some of them recordings were good, other words they were like, sometimes they were not so good, real cheap quality, but if you had a good one like that, you could probably say it was recorded on a properly adjusted uh, commercial machine, and you could probably use that too in a pinch. Um, and also I think if you, you didn't have a signal generator or something like that to make your own azimuth cassette, but you knew your cassette deck was properly aligned, you could probably even use the, um, you know, interstation FM noise that, like you, you used to, uh, you used to have, uh, you probably still got nowadays, I listen to so little, so little radio nowadays, um, you could use that, for example. In fact, I have did that before, but it's been uh, a long time ago. And this is what I'm going to be hooking up my scope probes to. Normally, they want you to terminate the outputs here with a 100 kilo ohm resistor, just like you would terminate any normal amplifier. But I only have one right now and I think for my purposes since I'm not measuring a specific output voltage or something like that I'm just looking for 
to make sure the uh, waveform is in phase and I'm going to adjust it for maximum output. I don't think that's going to make a um, any kind of a difference here so I'm just going to hook up the probes directly to here and that then just looks like that. Also before you start I have to point out that you have to make sure your cassette deck is mechanically in good shape because you don't want your like this one your commercially bought test tape uh, which are normally not that cheap if you can get them uh, off the internet you don't want this to be all chewed up so but I already know this is good another thing you should do of course is clean the uh, heads and the cap stand here and any other parts that are going to be in contact with the cassette with the cassette and also what I did I demagnetized the head and the cap stand here because you don't want your uh, you don't want your the um, tone on your test tape being erased if your head is magnetized something like that so that needs to be done before you start again everything's got to be in good order you can test that with an old tape to see if they if it's mechanically sound and of course they got these uh, hand demagnetizers you can buy they're pretty cheap and of course the clean the head with a cotton swab and uh, uh, isopropyl alcohol which leaves no residue so I think that's basically about it well that was almost it what you also have to do is here for example the in I have a service manual and it says the screw to be adjusted here is the one on the left and that's locked in place with some kind of Loctite you have to remove that first which I did with a little scraper so now I can fit a little Phillips head screwdriver directly in in there and it'll fit exactly on the screw and also when you make the adjustment you just turn it a real little bit at a time because a real little bit is going to make a big difference now as far as the cassette controls are they want you doesn't say anything about uh, pressing the Dolby button in or something like that they want you to have it's a normal tape everything's in normal position Dolby buttons off and that's all I got to worry about so I've now started to tape and I have the machine in play and right now because it's showing almost like a round circle I know I'm 90 degrees out of phase um, if I were to be in phase again on my oscilloscope it would be slanting down this way um, and if it would be slanting on this way down this way I know it would be 180 degrees out of phase so um, I know I have to do some adjusting here also I've got both of my here my inputs here they're both on what is that 0.1 volt here that are equal so I can get an equal trace because if not if you're way off you're going to get something like this or if your controls are way different you're going to get something like that that's why I keep them the same and if I were to shut one off you see there's one trace and there's the other one so this is giving me a good a good um, waveform to basically work with so let me go ahead and do the adjustment here you can see it's bouncing around here that might be that um, pinch roller I think probably a whole bunch of things can make make this like um, make this like this everything's got to be a really close tolerance um, let me go ahead and do the first um, adjustment here. Let me find a screw. Okay. I am now on it now. Oh, I just hit the table there. And, and now I'm going the wrong way again. So I think that would be something like this would be as good as I can get it here and of course I'm going to use 
fingernail polish and um, lock that screw for now. I think once I get a uh, new pinch roller, then this will be looking probably a lot better. But I'm not gonna, probably not, I'm not going to make this adjustment again. I'm just going to go ahead and change the pinch roller, or I will double check it. And if I'm going the wrong way here, I will have that. It's um, the ellipsis here is closing up, but of course it's out of phase now. I'm going to go ahead and put this in dual channel mode, and then you can kind of see like what I'm talking about. Um, Okay, now I have to increase the intensity here. You can see that here. In fact, it is exactly 180 degrees out of phase. Because if it were in phase, these peaks here, they would be right on top of each other. I could superimpose one on the other one, which here I, I can't. You can see it's, it's not in phase no more. Let me go ahead and turn it with the screwdriver and get that in phase. Now I know this looks like one's a little bit, or does it, both are the same amplitude, I'm not really sure. Could be the tape or it could be the problem which I have with the cassette with the pinch roller. Uh, let me go ahead and try to bring this in. See, now that would be in phase right there. Or rather right there it keeps bouncing around some so I will show one more thing what happens like when you turn this way too far um, I'm out of phase now and you notice the ellipses here getting really really smaller the amplitude is really really dropped now I can go back this here is the correct phase maximum amplitude because if I keep turning Notice here going the other, going all the way the other way, amplitude's gone down again. So that's basically that. Now I'm going to go ahead and do the actual adjustment as good as I can off camera, but that's kind of like how this would happen. It's in, in reality, it's like really really hard to unless I guess it's like like a high end cassette deck to get this a perfectly straight diagonal that's perfectly um, still in the real world but I will get a pinch roller sooner or later and then see what kind of a difference that actually did make if it stopped this uh, jitter so I managed to put in a different pinch roller and honestly I don't even think it looks like it made any kind of a difference so the problem is elsewhere I don't even know if I should call it a problem because you probably can't you know hear it um, it might just do because this is kind of a cheap cheap tape deck it could be the cassette itself it could be I guess a whole different number of things I, I looked at everything inside and I got a mirror cassette and tried to look in but I, I couldn't really see anything down there so I'm just going to go ahead and put some nail polish on it now uh, on the screw and then leave it at that. That's as good as I could get it. Thanks for watching.